on, guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. So, as you guys know, I haven't been putting up the hand-to-hand -hand combat videos lately. Why? Well, I just got surgery this month. Actually, I got four surgeries this month from an injury that I sustained when I was doing Muay Thai over in Thailand a couple of months ago. And I just got that done, and I won't be able to do any martial arts for a little while. Unfortunately, it's the way it is. So, you guys know I gave you like three really good counter surveillance videos. If you haven't watched those, it's good. Like, go and check it out. It's information that you should know. But today, you know, I'm, I'm like, hey, listen, what am I going to do? Uh, I want to keep pushing out videos. I want to keep the channel going. So I figured let's get into some world affairs. Let's give you some information about what's going on in the world, what we might expect to see so that we can make informed decisions. We're going to start stateside. And let me, before I get into this, recommend to you, if you if you don't watch it already, check out The Wire. They do a great um, weekend briefing. And we've, we've interviewed these guys on our po podcast before. I think we were the first ones to interview them. Absolutely amazing information. Another podcast that I recommend you guys, PDB, the Presidential Daily Brief. That's Mike Baker's channel. He's been on the Joe Rogan show a couple of times. Does a does a pretty solid job. With that being said, let's let me get into some information with you guys that I haven't been hearing too too much about from a lot of other channels. Number one, there is a good potential that we're going to see the longshoremen. And the Gulf Coast and East Coast of America strike. And if that happens, the ports will be shut down on the, the Eastern and Gulf Coast of the United States. This is going to cause panic. Panic. Um, now, from what I understand, and keep in mind, I'm a former merchant mariner, no expert in this, but I, I think I know a little something about it. After like a week, it's going to cause fucking panic. And Joe Biden doesn't seem to be around, but his people, he's, I was going to say he doesn't seem to be like like uh, listening to the longshoremen, but he's not even really mentally there. But his people don't seem to care. And so the head of the longshoremen union basically came out and said, hey, like, if this isn't resolved by October 1st or 2nd, we're striking. This will shut down our ports. Now, the West Coast will still be operational, but we can't divert traffic from the East Coast to the West Coast. It would cause too much congestion. What would this do? Well, it would certainly start causing more inflation. It would just it would cause hoarding. It would cause panic. You'll start to see the shelves in the supermarkets go bare. So I want you to be prepared for this. And if you can afford it, maybe go out and get some more food and stuff or whatever you need over the rest of the weekend into Monday just in case we see something like this happen. And again, this is why I always recommend having, you know, a month or so of um, of stuff that you might need saved up. Never a bad idea. So we got that going on. Now, obviously, we've got the Middle East situation. We've been bombarded in the news. No pun intended. We've been bombarded in the news about what's going on. Hassan Nasrallah was recently killed, um, yesterday, actually. And I just want to I want to put this out there. So my Iranian friend, she sent me a video of this guy speaking yesterday. This was a speech he gave maybe a week or so ago, completely in Arabic. Luckily, I speak Arabic, so I was able to translate what he was saying. Basically, what he was saying in a nutshell is that Hezbollah will continue to fight with the help of Iran. As Iran gives Hezbollah money. Iran is going to continue feeding Hezbollah supplies. And with the help of Iran, there is nothing we can do. Essentially, that's what he was saying. So really, I mean, yeah, Israel Israel's doing a fucking amazing job. Like the intelligence that they are gathering and like they seem to know everything about the leadership. They just they have it dialed in like very impressive. Yes, they've taken out like 50 of their leaders, their top brass, like they're just dismantling this organization. Like it's it's cool to watch. I mean, the Pedro attack, like all of that, like it's been seriously very interesting to watch. But I think the real problem here and really what it is, Iran. So, yeah, we're probably going to see a ground, some type of ground incursion into parts of Lebanon. 
they they probably are going to go sweep and and take out as many arms depots and stuff and I would assume that they're going to do a lot of that with air assets, but you're going to have to send dudes in eventually and take care of what you can't with, you know, what you can't do with airstrikes and shit like that. You're just going to have to at some point. How that looks, I don't know, but I, I, I do anticipate that happening. So here's two geopolitical risks right away. Now, the third geopolitical risk that I'm looking at is some type of, some type of, something to happen in Iran. Now, obviously, their nuclear program, it's not public information how close they are to, to getting to getting offensive nuclear weapons. But I'll put it to you like this. I was talking with my Israeli friend the other day and he says, wow, they, are, they, might, be, they might be two weeks away from the nuclear weapon. I said, dude, I've been hearing that for two years, bro. Like, don't even trip. Don't even trip on me like that, bro. Like, we don't know how far they are away. But I agree that it's probably not good, definitely not a good thing if they get it. I mean, Iran's been arming the Houthis against us and just like terrorizing our shipping globally. Um, they've they've been causing nothing but problems. They they have kill teams out there trying to assassinate President Trump. It's a big issue. It's a Iran is a big issue. They will not stop continue continuing to try to destabilize the world. Um, basically, anybody who's not Shia Islam, they have a target on. And by the way, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but Sunni Muslims all over the world have been praising Netanyahu for the job that he's doing, <laughs> fighting the Shia Islam dudes. And it's freaking funny because like, come on, man. But no, listen, after having been over to the Middle East, I don't know how many times now, like a, f <laughs> a few times. I can tell you this from firsthand experience, 100%, this is the case. These people over there respect strength. And if you're doing a good job leading your country and like getting victories, they they respect that. That's just what it is. So Iran has really painted itself, backed itself into a corner. Um, let's look at who Iran's potential allies are. Obviously, they got the Houthis. Um Syria, for the most part, I think would would be a fairly safe bet. Um, North Korea, China, and Russia. However, China China is not ready to fight against NATO. Uh, I don't believe they are. I, I really don't. And we've been moving a lot of assets into Australia, really preparing pretty well for a war with China. Um, and I think if push came to shove, China wouldn't want that. They would back out and say, sorry, Iran, like, calm down. Like, we're not, I don't know. Maybe they would give them, maybe they would arm them. I, I don't know. But I don't anticipate China being too much of an issue on that front. Russia has been degraded. Uh, it's got its own problems it's working with right now. They'd probably try to help out as much as they could, but they can't do as much as they should or or would need to. North Korea, obviously, yeah, that would be a concern. They're a nuclear, offensive nuclear capable country, and they're fucking crazy. So that would be a concern. I don't know who I'm leaving out. I feel like I'm leaving out a country or two, but probably some some wild cards in there. Uh, but mm, when you compare that to the United States. And I'm saying if we sanction something against Iran, I don't anticipate Israel striking Iran by itself. I don't think they could win that war. But if the United States sanctions something, obviously we've got NATO behind us. Turkey, eh, that's a wild card. But the rest of NATO, I think would probably be eventually, I mean, they're kind of like a lot of women in the background, like the Europeans, but I think when push came to shove, they, they'd probably, they'd probably, they'd probably help out. So we've got NATO, we've got Israel, which we know those guys aren't stopping for shit right now. They don't care. They will fight to the last man. Um, and we've also got the Sunni, the Sunni Muslim nations behind us. So who are, who is that? Anyone in the Gulf really? Um, save Qatar, maybe. And maybe save Oman. But we've certainly got the UAE. We've certainly got Saudi Arabia. 
Uh, we've certainly got Bahrain and um, probably Kuwait as well. So we've got a lot of these <laughs> uh, Sunni Muslim guys behind us in, in some respect, and certainly Saudi and uh, the UAE. So that's a lot. That's a lot of firepower and strength that we could bring to bear against Iran. Am I encouraging a war against against them? Against the mullahs? No, no, no. I mean, I'm not. I don't want that to happen. Obviously, like, I don't, I do have a lot of skin in the game, but at the same time, um, I'm not going to be going over there myself. <laughs> so easy for me to, like, sit here and warmonger about that because I'm 38 years old and my opportunity to go and put my boots on the ground and fucking stick a bayonet in some Iranian is over. Um I would probably be involved in other ways, but at least I wouldn't be going house to house <laughs> in Iran, right? So with that being said, like with that in mind, I can't sit here in good conscience and like warmonger about it. Do I think that it would, do I think that it's necessary? Honestly, I do. I, I think that we need a regime change over there. And I think we all know how regime changes go in the end. It's not a good thing, but look, the Iranian people are even against their own government, dude. It's time, dude. Like, get these mother flowers out of here, bro. Like, uh, would that spark a third world, world war? Probably. It probably would. So, again, I don't want that. I definitely don't want that to happen. But is it necessary? It's getting to the point where, look, look, Iran's been harassing our shipping um, through the Houthis. They're continuing to destabilize the world. There's assassination attempts against Emperor Trump. Like, come on. Like, that's that's enough to piss me off right now. Okay. So that's what it is. What else am I looking at right now? Well, I'm going to put this out there. I'm positioning myself as far as the market goes in oil. I think that oil is sitting around 52 week lows, certainly right now. Um, and I think that nobody's pricing in the fact that there might be some major shit happening in the Middle East. So just a quick tip. That's what I'm doing. I don't encourage you to ever do anything like that. You will lose money, but that's what I'm doing. Um, where do I see this all going and what does it mean for us as individuals who are simply trying to prepare ourselves for thriving in a very hostile environment? Right now, we all know that inflation and politics and geopolitics and everything else is just making our lives increasingly more difficult. Where do we go from here? Well, obviously, it's kind of a wait and see mode right now, because depending on who gets in office, that's what's going to happen. Um Obviously, if Harris gets in long term, the United States will never will never recover. If Trump gets in, I believe we will see an end to conflict in both the Middle East and Eastern Europe. I think it's interesting that Zelensky has been meeting with President Trump. I think that I think and look, the Ukrainians have very good intelligence. I think that they know something that the general public might not about the way that the American people feel about President Trump. I think they are, so to speak, pricing in a Trump victory. I'm personally not. I'm pricing in a Harris victory. But I, I feel like the Ukrainians are not. I feel like the Ukrainians want Trump to win. It's going to be very interesting what happens over the next couple of months. And I wish I could give you my outlook, but I don't have one. I'll be honest. But I think the rest of this coming month, October, is going to be very chaotic. I would encourage you, I would encourage you to have a month or so of, of stuff stored up that you might need. Um, certainly have cash available. And I know it's like, I know it's hard. Like I spend money on stupid shit. <laughs> I just bought a I bought a plate carrier the other week and I'm not satisfied with it. So I just bought a new one. Like I, I do stupid shit too. Right. But um, 
I encourage you to to put whatever you can like in cash and keep that keep that handy because cash is king. You know, have enough ammunition if you're an American. Um, get a thousand rounds of whatever you can. You know, you should that should be something you already have is is one thousand rounds of something for each weapon. Obviously, we've seen, you know, that FBI guy came out and said that he's encouraging Americans to prepare, invest in a self-defense weapon, have a plan, this and that, get to know your neighbors. Like, that's good advice no matter what. And I think that's what he was saying. But I don't I don't think he's privy to anything in particular. But you don't have to be privy to anything in particular to realize how volatile the next couple of months are going to be. All of the information that I have coming to me, which is a considerable amount given given the career that I am in currently, which is finance and you know stock market, betting <laughs> betting on the stock market professionally, I've got a considerable amount of information coming into me, and and given everything that I'm currently receiving, we're in for a wild ride. We are in for a wild ride. I would highly recommend that you guys. Continue educating yourselves, you know, and I harp on this all the time, but learning about things like medical and um, detecting surveillance and all of that type of stuff, like the real practical stuff is really what's going to save you in the end. Obviously, know how to shoot, know how to shoot tactically, um, know some hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff, you know, all of that, all of that hard skills type of stuff. But have good sources of information coming to you. And YouTube is a fantastic resource. Again, you know, Mike Baker does a good job. The Wire does a great job. The guys at S2 Underground there that do The Wire. Uh, there's many other channels out there that put out great information as well. And stay informed. Absolutely stay informed. If you have the right information ahead of time, it will certainly aid you in making the right decisions when they count. So with that being said, guys, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be out of commission as far as putting out hand-to-hand -hand combat videos. I have a request from you guys. Comment down below and feed me ideas of what you'd like me to talk about for the next couple of weeks while I'm recovering. Again, I really want to push out videos, right? Like, obviously, we monetize the channel. And I want to keep the momentum going. I know I'm gonna lose, I know I'm gonna lose views, but let me know what you guys would like to hear about in the meantime. And I would appreciate your comments very much. So with that being said, until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I'll zin you later. Cheers, motherflowers.